All right, I'm going to talk about 3D printing and rapid technologies tonight, technologies that are transforming our world. There's a lot of hype out there, which begs the question, is it snake oil or is it salvation? In 2011, there were 1,600 stories in the media about 3D printing. In 2012, there were 16,000. I invite you to be the judge. 3D printing is like inkjet printing, except instead of ink on a piece of paper, physical materials lay down on a build platform that lowers, allowing each successive layer to be put down. One of the inputs is 3D scanning, and here's a scan of Senate President Mike Miller. There's three main uh, parts of the 3D printing ecosystem, 3D scanning or imaging existing objects, 3D design, drawing an, the, an object that you want to print in computer software, and then the 3D printing itself. That never happens. Um, we see a lot of things like this out there today, which kind of points to the snake oil. <laughs> but what is important about this is that it demonstrates that technologies are accessible and we have a cognitive surplus. Um, it, within six months of the 1, 2, 3D product line from Autodesk being launched, it was downloaded 120 million times. Every society has its challenges, whether that's man-made, given to us by nature, or the result of a globally evolving world. 3D printing has been used to address all of these challenges. And in order to be competitive, we need to use the best, the best tools to approach those challenges. 3D printing is game-changing technology that's transforming our world and our lives from the personal to the industrial, giving us mass customization, optimized products prior to commercialization, and leanly manufactured complex geometry. As humans, we have a few things going for us. One are our opposable thumbs, another one is our imagination. And with these technologies, if we can imagine new solutions, we can create them. And one of the things that's made America great is doing hard things together. Uh, some, and th those are some of the furthest reaches of technology. When the Gutenberg press came out, people thought it was really cool. In 2012, when we printed a violin in a few hours, people thought that was pretty cool. Um, we need to be innovative and entrepreneurial in our work. The pace of change is great, and we need to make what we innovate. We can print in over 100 materials today, from a wide range of plastics to glass to metal. A lot of people say, well, how much does this cost, Jan? Well, there's a little chart out there about a, a, about a two-inch bunny. In plastic, it costs $7. In stainless steel, it costs $31. The primary uses of 3D printing today are proof of concept, iterative prototyping, functional fit testing, tool making, pattern making, and end-use products. And what we get from these technologies are faster, cheaper, and more agile product development and manufacturing. Printing gives us what we want, when we want it, with lights out manufacturing. Optimized products prior to commercialization, lighter weight products, with a, um, with a multiplier effect, this results in hu huge savings, especially in, in an industry like aerospace. Customization, small batch manufacturing. The world's biggest manufacturer, GE, is committed to advancing these technologies from energy to healthcare. In 2020, GE is expected to be printing tens of thousands of parts on en jet engines alone. GE is engaging new ways of working, teaming up with entities like Quirky and GrabCAD. The aerospace industry is one that has led the way with 3D printing. Boeing has been studying and certifying uh, non-critical parts for 10 years. There are over 60,000 3D printed parts that are flying around out there on aircraft today, ones that you might even have traveled on. The sweet spot for rapid manufacturing is in low volume, high value products. And so here are some stats from the medical field, and that's another of the three industries that are really advancing these technologies. So the aligners and Invisalign braces, hearing aids, and titanium hip implants. One of the biggest challenges, I think, in getting, getting this technology more integrated into our workflow is our, getting our industrial era brains to understand new tools. New tools and new ways of working require new thinking. We have complex computing systems that give us topologically optimized forms. We also need to transform our schools and our workplaces into places of action, engagement, innovation, and entrepreneurship. We need STEM, absolutely, and we also need STEAM. We need to be creating creative, non-routine workers. It took 20 years for the 3D printing industry to get to the $1 billion mark, and it took six years to get to the $2 billion mark roughly the time of the fall of the Berlin Wall to the Great Recession of 2008. And we are not alone in our pursuit of these technologies. There's a lot of hype out there, and there's also a lot of true success stories that are really great. I do think that we're headed to the tr for the trough of disillusionment based on the amount of hype that's out there, but on the other side is a plateau of productivity. And the sweet spot for 3D printing is hybridizing manufacturing, making new capabilities and options 
available, making new things possible. So snake oil or salvation, neither. We are our own salvation and we know that. Elbow grease, discipline, smarts, these are the things that made America the world leader that it has been and we need to get back to basics just with some new tools. So we need to take the challenge to radically shift our thinking about how we're going to address today's challenges. We need to take courage, embrace new tools that we don't quite understand in order to be globally competitive and to play, continue to play a constructive role in the world.